going to dive right in with the WGA because that's been the talk of the town, right? Trying to figure out this situation so we can all get back to work. Um, and it's absolutely wild. Well, we know that the Writers Guild of America, they have voted officially overwhelmingly to ratify this new contract, uh, formally ending one of the longest labor disputes in Hollywood history. The membership voted 99% in favor of the ratification, with 8,435 votes saying yes and only 90 members saying no. Now, this was a 148-day strike, ranking one of the longest strikes in Guild history, matching the duration of the 1960 film strike. Mm. Now, the TV strike that year went for an additional week, ending after 156 days. Now, and the uh, 1988 film and television strike lasted about 154 days. The WGA ended its strike on September 27th after the boards of the WGA West and East voted to submit a tentative agreement to the membership for ratification, as you know if you listen to this show regularly. The voting period opened on October 2nd and closed 1 p.m. Pacific time on Monday. Now, ratification is necessary. Uh, It's a necessary step to get the industry back up and running. But production cannot resume until the AMPTP reaches a agreement with the other strike of Hollywood, which is the SAG after strike, whose 160,000 members have been on strike since July 14th. Negotiations with actors union uh, resumed last week, and they were continuing this week as well. The two sides remain at odds, though. Um, Increases in minimum rates and opposed revenue share in streaming and other items. We're going to dive deep into it. Oh, yeah. So that's the good news. One strike ratified over. Writers can talk about their stuff. They're back in their writers' rooms. They're knocking out some scripts. Yay! Now the bad news. On Wednesday night, and I'm talking barely Wednesday night, y'all. If you were on the East Coast, it was Thursday fucking morning, okay? But on Wednesday night, the AMPTP announced that talks with SAG-AFTRA had been suspended. Yes, you heard me right. After all that optimism for the past couple weeks that we've been talking about on the show have been suspended, saying the gap between the two sides is just too great and that conversations are no longer moving in a productive direction. Now, sag after has been on strike, as we said, since July, joining the Writers Guild of America on the picket line. But whereas the writer's strike ended on September 27th, as Logan just told you, the AMPTP has yet to strike a deal with the actors. Though things were helpful, hopeful for the past couple of weeks... They just, they fell apart. SAG after Chief Negotiator Duncan Crabtree Ireland said that the studios rejected the union's request for a 2% share of streaming revenue. So on Wednesday, the actors proposed they instead be paid a set rate per subscriber of all the major streaming platforms. But the two parties disagreed on how much that would actually cost the studios, with SAG-AFTRA estimating $500 million per year and the studios countering that it could be as much as $800 million a year. SAG-AFTRA wants its members to be compensated fairly for all programs that appear on streaming, including theatrical films and, and this is the biggie, we talked about this last week, pre-existing shows licensed from broadcast and cable. The studios in the union remain at odds over several other items as well, including artificial intelligence and increases in minimums to keep pace with inflation. Now, SAG-AFTRA is seeking an 11% increase in minimum rates. The studios is offering the same deal it gave the WGA and the Directors Guild, 5%. Fouled by a 4% and a 3.5% each three years when they renew the contracts. Now, the studios, as always, because they're little shit babies, they published its most recent proposal on Wednesday night in hopes that the rank and file members would read it and see it as a reasonable basis for further negotiation. The studios made a similar move, like I said, when talks stalled with the WGA in mid August, which prompted backlash from the members of the WGA, who saw it as an attempt to circumvent leadership. SAG is saying the same thing. They thought it was a shitty move to put it out there. It didn't work. It backfired for this one, just like it backfired for the writers. Um, 
yeah, this is this is just it's heartbreaking. It is absolutely heartbreaking. It was looking so good. It looked like it was rocking and rolling, and mm, I mean, what are you going to say? Like they're there for two weeks. They were meeting every other day. So, yeah. I mean, you thought we were getting somewhere, and then boom! Just kidding. Fuck you. Yep. Um, but the Hollywood unions issued a statement today calling on the major studios to resume bargaining with SAG-AFTRA. Two days after talks with Actors Union broke down. As we just mentioned, the AMPTP has offered SAG-AFTRA a deal that would be uh, patterned in key respects on agreements reached with the Directors Guild of America and the Writers Guild of America. The guilds are wary of being pitted against each other, though. Now, in a statement, the unions, which include WGA, DGA, and the IATSE, argued that the AMPTP should realize that in dealing with SAG-AFTRA and said, quote, our members work side by side for the same handful employers and our unions and guilds collectively stand more united than ever, which is true. You saw everybody on each other's picket lines. Oh, yeah. Each day, a fair contract addressing actors' unique priorities is delayed as yet another day of working professionals across our industry suffer unnecessarily just no work. No, and that's what it is. It's unnecessary. Exactly. And at this point, it should be clear to the studios and the AMPTP that more is needed than proposals, which merely replicate the terms negotiated with other unions. We collectively demand that the AMPTP resumes negotiations in good faith immediately, make meaningful moves at negotiating tables with SAG-AFTRA to address performers specific needs and make a fair deal they deserve and you guys know we wholeheartedly agree with this i feel like you know they try to cut corners a lot of times to where they feel like that's not that big of a deal why do they even want this that type of situation but it's obviously something that is hurting the actors and sag aftra and all these other unions in the long run that's why everybody else was going on strike so just one of those things man we have to get back to the negotiating table i'm hoping at some point next week but we'll see sadly i I don't think so though i saw today that insiders with some some pretty solid knowledge said they expect it to be weeks or months before they go back to the table what the which would be just awful but i do like that all the other unions in in solidarity came out and said look the actors are different you can't give them a contract that's the same as the one you just gave us, the writers. You can't give them a contract that's the same as you gave the directors. We're all different. And you need to go to the table and listen to what they need and get a deal done with their specific needs. I love that. I, I love that they're behind them and standing with them and saying, we're not all the same. And you, you can't treat us all the same. So we'll see. We'll see.